Hello gamers and welcome to a special episode of The Professor. And today I have a special guest, TigerCon, who uh, occasionally shows up in live streams on the channel. Say hello to everybody. Greetings. And uh, the reason Tigra is on is because we're talking about a uh, rather important subject that has popped up recently with Star Citizen. And this has completely derailed the original topic I was going to talk about uh, on the show. Because I felt this needed to be talked about. He had a lot of things to say about it. And what some of the things we're going to be talking about are game development, which is software development. And when it comes to software development, he knows exactly what he's talking about because he's done it for 25 years professionally. So he is not just someone who's just pulling shit out of his ass, uh, saying this or that. He's actually done professional software development and games are software. There is, there's a little bit more to to it than that with games like there's there's the artwork sound and everything but most of the work on a game is developing the code and that's the part that he has years of experience with is developing software and and hearing from people uh, we were we were watching something and he was talking they were talking about you know things with game development he was going that's exactly what happened that's exactly what happened while we're doing the software development. That's exactly the way it was. It was exactly the same way. I'm trying to remember what we were even doing at that point. I don't even what we were talking about at that point. About how there might have been some uh, something, a feature needed to be implemented, and there was legacy code. Oh, yeah. That had uh, to be yeah, a we were... legacy code that had to be rewritten, yeah. and you've run yeah. into that before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like where I you, worked, it was some really old. <laughs> not, 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 um, not disclosing where you used to work, but you used to work with applications that were older than you. Yes, that's like they really, were some really old stuff, old programs. And um, you know, I've, I haven't done game development, but I have researched what's involved because I'm an amateur video game journalist and I actually do what journalists are supposed to do and that's do research because we have game journalists that don't do that and I do what they are supposed to do and I don't do this professionally so hey uh, and reason for this episode is there has been some drama around Star Citizen. When, are, when isn't there drama around Star Citizen, really? They're not drama about Star Citizen. There's always some tier of drama always going on. If yeah. I get more worried when there's no drama. Oh. I mean, something's gotten too quiet. Yes. And um, what happened is, is February 2nd, you can see on the screen here, uh, they made some pretty big changes to the roadmap. Not, not really that big a change. What they done is, I believe they they took off. Um, I believe what we're dealing with here covers the article covers what they did. Yeah, it covers they're, what they did. Basically, it is the make sure I'm getting my labels right. The release view is they're no longer going to show the release views out ahead of what they're currently the patch currently coming up. Yes. So, like, when we get past 3.18, they're not going to show anything. Like, we won't see 3.19 until we get mm -hmm. to 3.18. Then we'll start seeing 3.19. Yeah. And they've done this for a very good reason. And I agree with this reason. Because we've seen this happen to a game called No Man's Sky with the media. And we follow the content creators who made this necessary these star citizen content creators who actually made this change necessary we followed them and i agree that they're becoming a problem or they've been a problem necessarily say problem but they're they are contributing and i think a little bit of self-reflection wouldn't hurt on their part is how i how i think of it yeah 
as I think there's some lack of self-reflection in their role. Mm-hmm. And that, when, I look, when I look at this, that's what I see. I see a little bit of lack of self-reflection on their position, how they're viewing it, and why it seems like they're taking it so personally. When someone like me as a backer is like, no, oh, it's fine to me. I mean, yeah. we're still getting information, but why someone like them, whose channel depends on content and showing what's coming and, and doing all this and hyping things up, why this sort of cuts into their work a little bit and why they're sort of reacting to it and everyone else is sort of overreacting to it. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, and CIG's point of view is we're tired of all the, the freak out. We're going to tope it down a little bit. It basically decided to freak everybody out now to mm-hmm. save them from freak out later. Yes. Once this blows over, there's going to be less noise overall in the end. Yeah, I mean, because... I'm pretty sure they knew this was going to stir, stir oh. pop. Oh, yeah, because what would happen is they would have something on the roadmap, and then let's say somebody like Board Gamer or Eradicator would put out a video about it. They would say, this is coming, this and this and this and this is coming. And then suddenly they find out, oh, well, there's CIG. It's been delayed. They, 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 out, they've yeah. delayed it. They've, yeah. they've moved it down the pipe. Yeah. They've mm-hmm. taken it. Because, like, here's an example. Here's a, here, This is the perfect case of where we're going at. They had a bunch of features. In fact, I think I have a list here. Like uh, player interaction, FPS radar and scanning, hacking tank, DVAT2, 0G push and pull, persistent hangers, um, hangar manager app, missed call C, uh, taxi missions, pirate swarm. Okay, they have said multiple times on Star Citizen Live mm-hmm. that they're on the road to Pyro. Yeah. How many of these items contribute to Pyro being released? None of them. None, None of them, of not them. really. None of them really. I mean, I mean, they they have their own needs, and these need to come out, and I'm sure they're going to come out. But if they're focusing on truly getting Pyro out the door, mm-hmm. I mean, if that's really internally what they're like, the, the order has come down from upon high. Yeah. And Chris is like, no, get it out the door, and they're like, well, we got to drop all these other projects or all these other compartment or c- components. Yes. They're like, fine, then do it. Get Pyro out the door. We need to have something to show for our ten years. Yes. We got to have something. Movie. They need to get beyond just having the Stanton system. Stanton system, need... yeah, and they know it. And they need to get Squadron 42 out the door, which does probably use some of these features, like Zero-G. In fact, we know Zero-G push and pull is part of it because in that vertical slice that they did a number of years ago, there was some vertical G push and pull stuff going on. EVA, um, FPS, radar, and scanning. These are features that that game needs. And they've already said they were trying to reorganize some of the features, for example, are player interaction experience, FPS radar and scanning, hacking tech, EVA T2, zero G push and pull, persistent hangers, hangar manager app, misc hull C, NPC taxi missions, pirate swarm, vandal swarm improvements. Okay, so some of these features, many of these features are not needed for Pyro. Yeah. It's like, there's, there's nothing here for Pyro. And CIG have said, you know, they want to get Pyro out the door. They have come down from upon high that at least what I would think is the way that they're talking about it is that mm-hmm. they really want to get Pyro out this year. Yes. And so um, none of these features have anything to do with Pyro. But they've also said that they want features to come out in Squadron 42 first. So they're going to implement them in that game, which we don't have access to. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to mature them there and then they're going to bring them over. And many of these features would be there, like radar and scanning. Possibly hacking, EVA T2, mm-hmm. zero G push and pull. Um, those are definitely uh, the miss call C. Those are definitely in Squadron 42. Yes. So and like, we even saw zero G push and pull type of activity inside the vertical slice they did a number of years ago. And this is the thing that they've made clear several times is that Star Citizen and Squadron 42, technology wise, are are joined at the hip. They, they use the same foundational code that um, yes. what one they, in in behind the scenes in the engine they are basically the same thing. Um, so what affects one affects the other. They share that, and it's helped speed up the development. For it'd probably be much worse if they didn't have that. They would need way more people. Yeah. So this helps cut down because they can share that technology. Um, but then after that point, there becomes a lot of differences. For example, Squadron 42 has a single player story that they've got to work out. We don't know what their progress is and them telling us all the little features about it might create spoilers possibly. Yes. They're trying to keep that close to the vest because they want it to be a surprise. They want it to be a fun game when it comes out and everyone knows what's going on and it won't be. Whereas 
a Star Citizen has a completely different set of criteria. It's got the server meshing, it's got the, um, it's got the um, um, pyro, the, the jumps between star systems, it's got all the online stuff. So um, they, they diverge. And so this creates this where they have all this work to do and they're, it's just taking the time. Okay, so let me see, hold on a second, you mean? So a lot of these, so a lot of these features um, got removed in order to get, or, or really not removed, but, but delayed in order to focus and prioritize Pyro. At least that's the way it looks right now from an outright perspective, given mm -hmm. what the way they've been talking on their Inside Star Citizen. Yeah. They've been basically reiterating Pyro's coming. Now, yeah. We don't know exactly if that'll come this year, but we know that that's become a priority within their within the organization. And they've least, been, yeah, they've, they've been stuck in this one star system for so long. But they need to do something. They really yeah. need to get us out of there. Yeah. Um, but Stanton has been their sort of technical petri dish. Yeah, it has been. It, it, it is. It is its own technical demo. This the call it a technical demo. Technical technical demo is partially true mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it is true but it's a playable demo it's something that you can actually take around and actually play yeah and it's it's, it's where they're creating their technology and they're showing what the game will eventually it's a way to see what the game will eventually be like and it's live so you can actually go play it which you don't get i mean imagine trying to, imagine if um who's the company that made cyberpunk uh, CD Projekt Red. Imagine CD Projekt Red trying to allow Cyberpunk. Let me make that. Imagine them letting Cyberpunk be playable while they were trying to develop it. Oh, God. Or, yeah, or World of Warcraft, you know, when they were trying to work on the classic, letting people try to play it while they were working on it. Mm -hmm. it. It would drive them crazy. They wouldn't be able to get it done. Yeah. So these people are doing something really crazy that nobody else in the industry has done. Everybody's taking it for granted and not appreciating what they've been given. Oh, she might not even know about this project. Chris Roberts could have just went and got some investment money on his good name and, you know, nobody would have heard the wiser. Not what they did. So, you know, it's like we have what we have now. You know, what we're getting and what they've ultimately decided here is there's been a lot of rumblings and... Um, going on and about the fact that they're pulling off this they're going to be pulling entries off the release view uh, and i think what they're trying to do is what you were talking about earlier was there's been a lot of promises they're not promises that's what people think they're not promises these are these are these are these are functionalities within the game that are being taken off because they've changed priorities because they do mm. they've reanalyzed what they want to accomplish and what these things will, you know, cause delays on. It's like, would you rather have those features or would you rather have Pyro? Mm -hmm. Which would you rather have? Yeah. They sat down and said, we like to have Pyro. I would agree with them. I'd love to have Pyro too. I think it'd be great to get that out the door. Oh yeah. But it's a lot of work. And so because of that, they only got so many people. They've taken people off the teams that are working on these features or they've handed these features over to Squadron 42 because they need them. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've started work on focusing on just what Pyro needs to become functional to get it out the door. Which should mostly be server meshing. They Like recently, they, they did refueling. They prioritized refueling all of a sudden. That's going to be coming out soon. Yes, that would definitely... That will definitely be yeah. very important because there oh, is... It will be. There are gas stops all over Stanton, but thing mm -hmm. is, Stanton it's a much smaller system. Mm -hmm. uh, size People aren't wise, realizing that. Yeah. yeah. Scaling wise, because of the way the game is scaled, the Stanton system is no bigger than the orbit of Mercury, from what I understand. And um let's see, I think it's, it's a small system. Me, me and Dave took a look at the Microtech's about the size of the moon. Yeah, me and me and Dave took a took a look at the star map one time and realized that Stanton is a very tiny system. Yeah. When you look at some of the other star systems right now, you might have a ship that can get across uh, Stanton and have and be able to make that trip maybe two or three times. Mm -hmm. Some of these star systems coming up won't have nowhere near the number of gas stops, and they're going to be three, four, five, six times bigger. You ain't making it across without extra gas. And Pyro is one of those systems. 
going to be much bigger. It's nearly, I think, two and a half to three times bigger, I think. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong on that. It's several times bigger. And it's going to have far fewer gas stops. Right. So you're going to need fueling. You're going to have to have somebody to come along and gas you up. So they prioritize that over um, other features. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of they're trying to get that out the door because you got to have the UI team working on it. They were showing off the UI work. You've got to have systems programmers to come along and say, hey, these ships need to have these functions. Excuse me. These ships need to have this functionality or that functionality to make it work. You need to have docking improved in order for this to work. It's got to be updated for that, for example, you know, for these different things. Oh, yeah. So they've changed their priorities. Every time they change the priorities, which means on the release view, things get pulled off because they're no longer scheduled for that. Mm -hmm. And that's where everyone loses their minds. Oh my yep. God, they've, they've thrown off a bunch of other stuff again. It's all being delayed again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, well, yeah, you know, there's only so many people who can work so many work at so much time. And I mean, right here, it says introduction of new VRs. We shared a publicly a whopping 450 plus features across 52 teams. So they have a ton of work mm -hmm. and they're trying to focus on getting certain things done in a certain time frame. And so it, go on. Go ahead. So that that's where they need to prioritize of all these features across these teams that they have, who does what and when. And they have to they, they're like they, they sit down, they have a meeting. They're like, OK, what do we want to do this coming year? Well, we've got to get power out. This, the project is going to be 10 years old this year. Yeah. And it's it's really going to help them to have pyro out the door and be able to get Squadron 42 to a point where they can start showing more of it. To really show it in a finished state. Because right now, Squadron 42 has probably got more traditional development going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Which means a lot of it probably doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, just half of it's probably not, the thing probably doesn't even run half the time because it's still being edited on. The engine still probably got a ton of things that they're still doing on it. It doesn't even boot half the time. They can't show that. <laughs> no, no, they absolutely can't. Yeah, that it, it, it's, it's like trying to show uh, Cyberpunk five years ago, halfway through its development. It would, nobody would, everyone would just would freak out. And people act very immature and, and knee jerk and all this. And so they just, they don't need that. The they comments... don't need people going, this game sucks. Yeah. Look at how horrible it is years before it's even ready that's what happened in no man's sky the comment of everybody in this thread is basically why they're doing this yes the, the this the, the response in this thread alone the way everyone reacted and argued and fussing and fighting is precisely why they're doing this yep they're tired of that sort of bickering mm -hmm. and it's fueled by at least in part in part it's fueled by the content creators yeah. Because they'll talk about a future and everyone will assume that it's coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they try to stress the, you know, tentative, but they don't often stress it enough. You know, it should be really stressed more and it's not. And, you know, it's just, hey, we're talking about said feature coming. I think we talked about said feature coming. Not yeah. Tentatively coming, not maybe coming, not what they're working on. They, they want people to look at this in terms of here's what we're working on. Not this is done yesterday kind of thing and so these content creators get all been out of shape when their favorite feature doesn't you know gets pulled like say um let's see what was it then? And, um and this is what i'd like to see um persistent hangers for example you know persistent hangers is there's a lot to it you know and it inter intersects with the kind of things that pipe is going to be dealing with because mm -hmm. that's when you have the server meshing, it, it touches the server meshing technology, it touches the instancing, the sharding, and all that stuff. And that team that's working on it's going to be like, look, we can't do that right now because we got to have this shard thing working or whatever. And so they have to put that to the side because they can't work on both at the same time. You've got and... just X number of people who work on that particular thing. And that's the other thing is people think that it's like all these features come out all simultaneously and like there's there's like unlimited numbers of people for a particular thing not necessarily you may have you know folks who are working on deep engine core stuff 20 30 people who are a specialist mm -hmm. in that that don't do artwork it wasn't until it, very recently actually i think it was last year that cig finally had 700 employees 
yeah. back when we started playing the game, it was like, they what, had somewhere around 500? 400. No, about no, about 400 something. 400. Okay. For they yeah. had that many people, 400 and something, for a game that by rights needs at least five, six thousand people working on it. I don't know if you get that many, at least a thousand or more. I think they had that many. Uh, I think How Rockstar many? had that many working on GTA Five. Okay, well, I if you think. Can get, if you can get five thousand working on something, sure, they'd love to have the staff like that. I I, I knew the number offhand. I, I have researched that some time ago. I can't okay. remember exactly, but I know they had a lot of. It might be somewhere around two thousand. And remember, I know they not had everybody a lot. there is going to be programmers. You're going to yeah. have artists, audio mm -hmm. engineers. You know, planners, level designers. Not everyone's going to be, you know, dipping their hand into the code. Yeah. You know, they're going to only a percentage of those people will be doing that work. And that's the same thing for this. You know, the people who work on on, on this are they're only going to have a percentage of those people who are going to be coders. There's only so many of them. And, and they plan so on adding be broken down by, by certain teams. Yeah. And they plan on adding another thousand employees. Yeah, they're 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 ramp, they're ramping it up, and they're going to. Um, you know, get more hands on deck, but mm -hmm. it's still not going to be as much as what some of the AAA companies enjoy. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you've got a limited amount of work for, you know, I mean, you got a limited amount of work for a limited amount of people. And so they have to prioritize, and those priorities shift based on what they feel the needs are at the moment where they feel like they're at. Yeah. How well something has worked, how well something did not work. Are they perfect and do they plan perfectly? No, they're humans. There are people with date with jobs. These are people who work for a living and try to do the best they can and they screw up every now and then and they do screw up what are you telling y'all done screwed the pooch mm -hmm. y'all messed it up you know they've made some dumb mistakes even i question when they when they released the cut of steel i'm like you could do this you know it's like you, you got a, you got a vehicle here that carries nearly nearly half the population of an existing server <laughs> you know you got 25 seats in here you fill two of these guys up and you've got the whole server on board I, you know two, on two ships that's why i wish no clip would do a documentary on this game and just highlight just how huge mm, how my guess is no clip an effort it is to get this game done my guess is no clip probably wouldn't touch this until probably it's done then they need to come back and definitely do one on it yeah but um, at least a part one of some kind, and then maybe do a follow up in a few years or something. Yeah, because th just the effort of getting this game done has been just a monumental. And I, effort I think to people get to think they that are. they're not making an effort, but I think I mean you're you're getting new content every freaking quarter, mm -hmm. every three freaking months. You've got new content coming out the door, and then you've got another game project sitting in the background that they got to get out the door too. No, there, 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 there. If you know, as people said, if this was a scam, it's the worst one ever. They're not trying to scam anybody. They make mistakes, yes. And and you know, remember, yeah. and, and remember also, this is after they were building a game initially. Then they, then the community the voted line, for them to continue on. I think technically, when we talk about ten years of worth of development, I think it's a little misleading because I think they're a little. You got to count the first almost three or four years as being not part of that. Mm -hmm. but really, they're 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 much earlier than that. And when you look at where they're at, they're kind of they kind of reflect that. Because remember, this was built from scratch. There was probably what maybe thirty people working on this when Chris Roberts started it, including Chris Roberts. Yeah. When they started this, and this project had not, it did not have the scope it does now. It started out completely differently. And they were, they were really working be, um, on the game then. They were actually busy rewriting the engine. They were rewriting the um. Well, you had that, oh. and then you with the game's idea of what it was supposed to be was Freelancer 2.0. It's yeah. supposed to be more of a redo of Freelancer, I believe. Yeah. And um, about With 2014, yeah, when about 20, 2014, 2015, I think is when it happened, is when they decided, they asked the community, do you want us to expand the scope of this? And I might be getting the year wrong on that, but they got a resounding yes. So that's when they started working on things like Planet Tech and stuff like that. This game was never going to have even Planet Tech. Yeah. I would say that given where the game is, what it was supposed to be, it was probably going to be more like what Starfield is. It, it, it seems like it's going to be. Or what Elite Dangerous Odyssey is now. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Um, 
wasn't going to be anything more than that. And I don't even think it was. It wasn't even supposed to have plants because you go back and you look at the early work. Mm -hmm. They don't have. When you look at Area 18, it was never. It was like this pre pre um, pre rendered landing cycle sequence where you're flying yeah. through the clouds and and whatnot, and it's totally different looking than what oh, you've seen. Oh yeah, now. totally. Uh, the opening area where as you come out of the out of the um, train station in Area 18, that is almost right in that identical. area is right, yeah right in that area that's where there used to be like a doorway or something they were showing and you your your ship would be docked right behind it or something they didn't yep. have the uh, tram system at the time yeah they didn't have the tram system as you're coming out and you see that circular mm -hmm. um holographic display with the gears and everything that's that is one of the few remaining pieces from that from that um original that set. area of set of mm -hmm. area 18 yeah everything else has been completely changed yeah there was it wasn't on a planet and all that jazz they didn't yeah. do any of that they had no anyway, <laughs> atmospheric flight or anything like what yeah. we have today so what they so anyway i think what's happened is the community has and they've, they've gotten stirred up because the content creators are stirred up because they're upset because this cuts down on their ability to have content it, it cuts down on them having talking points yeah um and so I mean, it, it kind of hurts their content a little bit it does they, it does it does it does spike them a little bit kind yeah, of hard yeah and they release a new video every day i mean yeah so them, the, pretty if, much all if they look do. at the if they look at this they have to work much harder looking through the um progress tracker they have to look they have to dig through it a little more to get what they need from it now mm -hmm. what i think is I think what would help, and this is something I've said the other day, was I think the progress tracker should have more detail. I don't think it should just have where a line begins and ends and just, hey, we have a project here and we have this thing there. And I think it's too little. I yeah. think they could they could do more there. I think it needs to be detailed more to give the kind of information that they're looking for. Like, for example, like we look at EVA tier two, and it says duration 61 weeks. And it's got a big old long line here saying animation engineering okay and it's got two people there and two people there and it's got deliverable view okay da, 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 da. okay so it shows further even experience it just a brief description and duration it doesn't tell us anything honestly where this project is at yeah. or where this particular feature eva tt was at it doesn't tell us nothing and they show how many people are working on what like it like... says five teams and all that what, I, what yeah. they need to do is break this down to a percentage system and like when it says render duration I put a little thing percentage complete and what i mean by that is have just that percentage complete and the percentages mean something here's what i said if it's zero percent it's a feature that they want mm -hmm. and they have not touched it if it's if it's um up to 25 percent Zero to twenty-five percent. That's their pre-production. That is their analysis, analysis and design, uh, concept art. Uh, give me one moment here. You have to edit that out. Analysis and design, concept art, any pre-planning stages. You know where it's all pre-planning work. Where you're not coding, you're not drawing, you're not you're not doing anything. It's just pre-planning. You're, you're sketching out what that feature is supposed to have, or you're sketching out what the animation is going to want to do. You're, 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 you're making your goals. You're setting yourself up. You're getting your goals done. Yeah. You're defining what you want to do. And that goes all the way up 25%. And you get 25%, those are done. Now, you may not have every little thing worked out, but you know what you want to make. Doesn't mean that's going to be what it winds up to be, but that's what you're going to want to make. You know, you know that you may not know how to do it yet, but you know what you want to do. Then you get the 25% complete. That's what that signifies. So zero to 25%, that's all pre-planning. When you know you got the pre-planning done, boom, done. From 25 to 50%, um, that's where you're doing your preliminary work. You've got some R&D that you got to do. You're not really sure, you know, up to that point, you know, what it'll completely take. Sometimes when you're working on code and you're working on design and stuff, you, you're writing code, you don't mm -hmm. necessarily know everything it's going to be to be done to make it work yeah so up to 50 percent if it's if it's 50 percent or lower that means there's coding being done that means there's work being in progress it's still at early enough a stage 
there's a lot of R and D still going on. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They shouldn't go past fifty percent until they know the R and D is done. Yeah. That they know how to finish. And then from fifty to seventy-five percent means they have figured it out. They, they, they figured out the technical blockers. And now they're moving on to they can get that feature done. At seventy-five percent, they stop. And that's where if there are dependencies, either technologies that either haven't been made yet. Mm-hmm. Or technologies that are relied upon that are that, that are still in development, or they have to that parts of it can't be completed until another team does its work. Yeah. Well, like, when they run into those, they should list what those are. They should have links to those. Like if and there's if some, old legacy code from that original version they, that they were working on. Up legacy code, you should they should have that listed there. You know, kind of something a uh, refactor code. We they call it refactoring refactoring such and such system for this to continue mm-hmm. um you did go to artwork for them to do some artwork for it. animation to do any audio work for the feature to be brought into full and the ui team and let's say but the evat2 has some ui work right yeah so you, you link out evat2 and it's 75 percent means it's done for what it can do now it's at other teams as work they see it as evat2 as a sub project Right, they list it as it's not the project itself; it's a sub sub component, and that zero to one hundred is all the same work except it goes to one hundred percent when it's done. That returns back. If same thing at seventy five percent, if it's locked by other technologies, they should reference them. Once that's cleared, once these sub projects are finished, they go back to it. Then you can move from seventy five percent to ninety percent. That's when they're finishing it out, polishing it, you know, kind of getting it ready for testing. You get ninety percent ready for the PTU. Mm-hmm. And when they hit the 100%, you know it's going to be in the next release. Yes. And have that percentage scale and 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 types, and they can refine this and 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 this percentage system and refine it to their needs, but have that on here so we can see how far they are. And if and there's work currently in progress, if it's stalled or waiting for dependencies, that's what it's on. It's like duration, percentage complete. And status. Yeah. And is they don't stalled? even have to update it, it in real time. They can just do it they every week. They can just do it weeks. every week, every two weeks, yeah. whatever they, you know, they can just update that as as they need. And that way we can see is it stalled? Is it delayed? Is it on hold? Nothing's really technically delayed in all this, but is it on hold? Yeah. And if it is on hold, then why why? Is it sub project work? Is it downstream work? Is it upstream work? Is it R and D? Like they're, they're stuck on it because they couldn't figure out I think for example the clouds. They are still working on the clouds. That it's an R and D stage, you know. Yeah. Like either T or T two, maybe they can't quite get the animation to work right. So it's in R and D to get something to work, mm-hmm. or it's in it's it's handed off to animation. Let us know how things are connected, and let us see that progress, and then we can see where everything's at, what's been worked on, where things are at. It doesn't tell us when, because they don't know. Yeah. Things move too much. They don't know. The big win question is what's driving everybody bunkers. Everybody wants it now, 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 now. When they're gonna get it? It's like here's the perfect analogy of this post. Here's I I, I have it. I have got it. I've got the perfect analogy for this post. Mm-hmm. This is all the people who are, who are watching this and the watching the roadmap are sitting there going, <clears throat> "Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet?" Are we there yet? This post is, if you don't stop, hold on, my voice is breaking again. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, you've been going, there you go. you've been talking, talking nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been listening. You got me, me stirred up on this. <laughs> it, this is CIG going, if you don't stop, we're going to pull the car over and give you a whipping. Yes. That's what this is. This is, this is, this is the, the, the parents in the front of the car telling the kids to settle down. Don't make me pull this car don't over and me, take this, my belt this off. This is them saying, don't make me pull this car over. <laughs> That's what this is. This is everybody yelling to CIG, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is CIG's response. If you don't, don't make me pull this car over. That, that's what this is. That's what this is. Yes. And it's Big Brother, it's the Big Brother um, content creator that they're talking to the most. Because they should know better. Yes, they should the know better. They're the only ones in the room that should know better. <laughs> they're specifically targeting them and they're being moody and cranky. Basically telling everybody, behave. That's it! What does this? Is. <laughs> <laughs>
It's, it's them being the adult in the room and telling the kids to behave. And when you look down in the when you look down into the thread, this is the arguing back and forth that you hear. Yeah. Everybody acting like children. Oh. And this is the adult yeah. in the room saying, oh, "Don't make me pull this car over." That's what this is all about. It sums it up. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, it's. <laughs> All this you know, drama like is and they're going to complain and whine, but you know this is what it is. All the drama is going to eventually settle down. They're going to see mm -hmm. the game continuing to get its updates. They're going to continue getting, it. and they're going to get Pyro. Eventually, my theory is they want to get it by Citizen Con. They want it. I don't know if they'll get it. What I, what they might get is they might get. It ready for a December or January release, realistically. Yeah, maybe they will. I'm be. actually, they're going to talk about it a lot. In if they don't get it by Citizen Con, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them the room to say they probably won't. Yeah, and it'll to give us all some space and say, wouldn't it be nice if? I would say a good, reasonable, realistic target for them is to get it at least by that December or January. But they, they should definitely be talking about it by then. If they get it out December, that might give them enough time to get it out for the next expo. Yeah. Or the next inter. I, it would be great if they could get it out by um by uh, Citizen Con. I think they want that, and I think this is why we see ships like the um the Liberator and the Odyssey. They need these ships because yes. people are going to have to have this long term travel and ships other than just the carrot. Now, what they need to do. Yeah, if you ever hear this, mm -hmm. make a carrier rentable. Yes. Make a carrier rentable. At least the Liberator. At least the Liberator. Make it rentable. It can be, you know, 60, 80K, whatever, but it needs to be rentable. Yes. Because not everyone's going to have the money and it's going to walk right into pay to win territory. If you have a ship that's 20, 30 million in game and you got star systems that nobody can travel through without a carrier. Mm -hmm. or without fueling yeah and people want to go on missions and stuff and they can't because they don't have a way to get out there and you want an easy way to get out there in game something that you can carry a um um carry a prospector or a combat ship out into the, the to, to the deep reaches and that you know because the liberator is a perfect ship for that because you know you you land your ship you you get everything set up and you fly it out there i think the liberator at least should be rentable maybe yeah. maybe the carrick or maybe not the carrick maybe the what's the other one the odyssey but definitely at least definitely <laughs> the um the liberator should be rentable yeah um because then that way people who are trying that want to explore the game getting 20 getting 60 or 80k is not hard that's really really easy it doesn't take much to get that much in game at, at least in the way the economy works right now yeah real simple to do and that's you know rent it out for a day you know and you go out there and you can do whatever you want to do and you're taking risks being out there by yourself with just you your carrier and your prospector or whatever else you might be flying but i think it's a lawless you know, system that that's up to the player to decide yeah because if you don't then it makes it it puts the pressure on the player to you in order to really explore the game you must go buy a carrier off the market yeah. And then that's going to add fuel to the fire of pay to win when we know it's not. But it's yeah. going to add fuel to that. So now, if you make a carrier rentable, it, it totally washes out that flame completely. I mean, whenever they release a new ship, there's the, it fans that. It fans I, I those do flames. that all the time anyway. But if you, this is one thing in particular that would be a problem. Yeah. Because you can rent. You can rent a prospector to go prospect, and, and you don't. It's hard to get the bigger rocks, but I think these new attachments kind of help stem that out a little bit. You can rent a combat ship. You know, you can go. There's several combat ships around the, the, the Titan and one. You know, to get started, if you just have a $45 package. But if you have a $600 Liberator, for example, and it's 20 million in game, and all your friends are out there in the black, and you're yeah. out there like, I can't go. I want to go, and I can't go that makes a lot of pressure to go buy it and i think you don't i don't think you want that yeah i think it should be rentable i think it can be more expensive but it should definitely be within reason i don't think the liberator has a fuel scoop i know the odyssey does it might not but it still should have enough fuel to get a pretty good distance into the deep and back yeah it could it'll be able to get to one of the 
stations out there to refuel. You should have a sizable fuel tank to be able to get to nearly anywhere you want to go. And because I, it can reach those places that a small ship could never reach. And I can you know, imagine like the, gotta, travel, the travel times are going to be long. Right, because the travel times are going to be longer. It's going to it's going to take longer to get there. You're going to have requirement more fuel requirements. Mm -hmm. It should have a more efficient engine, so time is a thing, you know. But it should be able to get you out to those no man land locations, so that way you can land, take down a ground vehicle, take out, you know, uh, 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 um, or just make a smaller vehicle besides just the Liberator, something even smaller that could, you know. Like an auxiliary vehicle that could carry another vehicle. Even Star Wars had these, like some of the smaller fighters that didn't have a hyperdrive, mm -hmm. docked with these rings, docked with these larger support vessels that yeah. gave them hyperdrive. Yeah, the so, Jedi, the Jedi fighters, uh, yeah, connected to the hyperspace rings. Yeah, um, Kenobi used one. Yes. So um, maybe a, a thing that you can attach that a ship can have more fuel because it's like a, it's like this thing you dock with and certain ships have it and it can get you out into the black much further because it, it add the extra fuel and you can leave it behind and parked and that way you don't have to use it and you come back and dock with it and you can take it back mm -hmm. as another alternative idea yeah because fuel is going to be a problem out there and so you know it's, it's like there, it's like where do you want to draw the line of because you don't want the impression that you have to buy these carriers to play the game yeah because that will smell and reek of pay to win and people will definitely freak out over it Oh, definitely. <sighs> and that's also why these um, starfarers are so important. Why they want to get the ship-to-ship -ship refueling done. Because they know that and the fuel rats will be able to come over from Elite Dangerous finally. Oh, yeah. They'll finally they'll have something their, to do. They'll be able to make their way over. <laughs> they'll finally have something to do and they'll be able to make money doing it too. Yeah. Cause, um, you because um can... they, they, it's it's it gives them the ability to do something in this game even more proper than the way that they're doing in that game because oh. that game you're just you're they've got these fuel limpets that are you know flying over and you know fueling your ship up and that's fine yeah but this even feels more legit where you're really just docking and you can control like for them i don't know i don't think they i do the fuel rats even take money i don't even think they know they, they don't get, they don't even get paid for their work over there. No, they Something don't. dangerous all this time. They've never gotten paid. And here... As far as I know, there's no way to transfer money from one user to another. The, usually people exchange cargo. I uh, think is what they do. They'll ch exchange a commodity or something. Ah. Uh, okay. I think is one of the things they can do. Because yeah. you can drop... You can eject a cargo and someone can take a collector limpet and go out and pick it up. Mm -hmm. I think is, is, is one of the... Like you would drop off a very expensive commodity... And a whole bunch of them and someone would come out and collect them and, and they would and the refueling in this it's a lot like a mini game in a way yeah you you set up you set up the pressure you set up how mm -hmm. much money they're getting and you can screw it up and spill fuel out in the space and and you can actually get paid for it though if you're doing it right and you know the fuel rats yeah. will obviously be able to get themselves set up properly if they and decide to come over the ships refuel like planes do with refueling planes yeah, in the you, air you, you you come out you fly up behind it and you dock with it well somebody made the comment that wait a minute if you're out of gas how do you fly up to it and dock with it if you ain't got no gas <laughs> like you know that's a good question and is is the starfarer going to be able to reverse dock have they thought of this is if you run out of fuel and your engine won't fire up you can't your engines will not fire and you cannot maneuver you're you're dry. Your tank is dry. You flew it till you flew it till it was dry. And obviously, would, you're not in an atmosphere because if you were in the atmosphere, you'd be on the ground. I and would that think that they question. would have. Here's another question: What happens if you're on the ground? Like you had enough fuel to make it to the ground, but you don't have enough fuel to get out of the atmosphere. Yeah. You can't get up. You can't start your engine. How do you get fuel then? Is there a way to fill up a portable canister and come out and pour it down the gullet of the ship? If you're on the ground and out of fuel, like say a ground vehicle, if the ground vehicle is out of fuel, how do you take fuel from a Starfarer in a portable container and fill up either a ship on the ground or a ship that can't maneuver and, you know, get it going again so that it can either hook up or it can't hook up at all because it's not designed for it, but still be able to get gas from it? Because Starfarers can land as far as I know. Yes, they can. 
So if, if, if you're on the ground and you have a ground vehicle and it's out of gas, how do you get gas? How, where do you go? Hmm. You know, they haven't or, implemented fuel in ground vehicles though yet. Uh, they have, they, they have fuel tank. I don't know. They don't, you don't usually do that though, but yeah, you can't, they will run out of fuel though. Hmm. I think they, they, I think the ground stations can refuel them. Okay. So the question is, how do you get fueled up in the middle of nowhere? You, like, like for example, um, Kate, um, Citizen Kate is doing this round trip around um, Microtech, for example. Mm -hmm. um, how is there a way to take, if they had a Starfarer in their fleet, how would they bring them fuel? Now, they could bring a smaller ship and dock them inside and maybe fuel them up, like say a Cutlass Black or a Carrick, and they can get into the hangar bay and be fueled up that way. Yeah. But if it's on the ground and it can't move, then how do you get it on board? Now, we are getting the tractor beam, and one could say, well, you could tractor it up. But that doesn't explain, like, if you have a small starfighter, you know, like, um, you know, or even, yeah. like, say, a, um, even, a, what do they call those? What's that starter ship? An Aurora or something. It's on the ground. They yeah, need ooh. something where you can carry some fuel in a fuel they tank. Need, they need a portable and... fuel container you can pour yeah. into it to get it into, that way it can be moved into position to get it proper gas. Or have the starfighter land close by. And then mm -hmm. just bring a hose out and just hook it up and start fueling. That would be epic. I mean, and that would be good tech for them to have where you can have like a flexible hose. Mm -hmm. That would be good tech for them to have. Yeah. Because yeah, they could they could do that with multiple things. Like they could have an actual fuel pump where you can take the fuel pump and actually walk it up to your ship and plug it into the, to a port on the side. And not only fuel for that, but you could do that with like draining a ship so if you're gonna if you're gonna suck a ship dry you could bring out a fuel hose and you plug it into your ship and plug it into a ship you're salvaging and then you could transfer the fuel over yeah because that's the other thing about um the salvage gameplay which they're working on mm -hmm. what about you're supposed about, to be able to drain these ships yes because where are you gonna put that fuel where are you gonna yeah. put the fuel that you drain out of them but they gotta have something for it i gotta imagine something's coming yeah. Gotta be, it's gotta be part of salvage. I, I agree. I, I, I don't think that's what they got right now, but I think it's what they're 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 wanting to do is that you can completely drain a ship of all of its resources, pull out all of its components, strip it. So basically, by the time you're done, it's dry, dead, and empty, and it's just a skeleton husk of a ship. <laughs> Which would be kind of epic. But if you found a ship that's in that state, you could recharge and refuel and repair it and get it off the ground and take off with it. Oh. I think it'd be great if you could find Idris, for example, mm -hmm. that's that's that in that state. Like it's on the ground, it's upside down, it's 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 its hull is stripped clean, its interior's a wreck, but it's still in one piece. It's still functional. Like mm -hmm. its components have all been stripped out. So your your org has to come in and bring in all these parts and pieces and hull and everything else like that. And you have to put this it's a whole project for an org to rebuild or not rebuild, but repair and reconstitute this entire ship. You bring some ships in. And flip it over and get it on it, get it on its landing gear. You do all the repair work to get it functional, and then you've got yourself an address. But you mm -hmm. find it, it looks like when you find it, it looks like any other derelict ship. Yeah. Right? It looks like any of the derelicts around the verse. But then you can actually repair this one with enough effort. You bring in all these spare parts and these components and you you plug them all in and get the whole thing working. And it's it's an org thing, and then you get the ship in the end as as a, as an org. And that you get a, a, a ship like that. Yeah. That, that you don't get it for free. That would be cool if they implemented that. That would be something that would be good for the entire org to do. It would be something for the whole org, because some of these parts are expensive. You're going to have to bring enough fuel in. You're going to have to bring enough repair mm -hmm. material in. You're going to have to all these other these other stuff. You're going to have to repair all the little nodes in there. Like, I mean, the ship should be busted. Anything that can break should be broken to the point just shy of the ship not functioning. Yeah that you find this absolute disaster on the ground and it's completely dark, completely black, no fuel, no gas, no quantum, no nothing. Hull is completely stripped clean. It's, it's scraped clean. All the little links and nodes inside don't work. There's no components, no shield generators, no fuel, run, nothing. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. And you got to take this and the org has got to work together and rebuild this thing back into a functional ship that you can get it and have something, you know, where you can 
get it and you can paint it and you can you know get it up in the air and fly it and get it armed and operational again you know this would really appeal you know what this would really appeal to mm. eve players possibly because they have like kind of salvage mechanic like that but. i think they do and they also build they work as an organization to build huge capital ships Right. And you, you're not going to get the ability to build a Idris, but I mean, no. if we could find a frame that has all the that that has the, that are working, but the ship is not broken. Yeah. But it's just been stripped to it, its it, absolute it's been, minimum. It, it, it's a Idris just laying out there on Hurston. It's been stripped down of its components, but yeah. its fra Looks space like frame is still. Hold of it. <laughs> yeah. You'd think that, and you know what they can do to a ship. It looks oh. like the Jawas found it. <laughs> it's been slurped clean. It's been stripped down. It's got nothing. There's not a single usable component. And it's up to the org to reassemble, repair, and rebuild the ship down to getting it, re getting it flyable again. I think that would be an epic challenge. That would it, really justify the existence of orgs, too. That yeah, would give would, them would, a reason for being around other well, than it, just it, people it, organizing to do stuff. It would, it would it would be a good org you know teamwork type thing you know because like you got to bring in you got to get the repair material somebody's got to go find that from somewhere you have salvage teams out stripping down other ships to you know to 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 to, to bring the big material to get the hull fixed mm -hmm. you know you got teams that bring in paint come in and paint the thing you got teams that come in and go out and do work and earn money to go find or buy or scavenge the components they need to get the engines working again you know, to get the electronics, to get the relays working, you know, to get everything back into an operation and people can bring in fuel and and, and refuel the engine and, and, and whatnot. You, it, it's a whole org effort. And I think it'd be awesome. Oh yeah, that would, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. It would be, and it'd be great for like really big orgs too. And not only that, if the org is really good at it, they could take these ships find these relics repair mm -hmm. and rebuild them and then sell them on a market mm -hmm. which is another thing that they're working on is uh being able to sell things to, to shops mm -hmm. i think that's still scheduled i think yeah. we'll see. as far as i know let's see, uh, let's see where pull. that's at on here Let's see where we can find it. Game services? No. Well, three seventeen is what? Oh, sh okay. That's ship to ship refueling. Now that says tentative, so we're not gonna make the same mistake everyone else made. That says tentative, which means they're still working on it. They're not done. Yeah. Selling items to shop 3.17 is tentative. So okay. it's something they're still working on. That yeah. may or may not make it. And that's what that's the thing that everyone always says. And in 317, it's gonna be, you know, ships and ships and ships or sh <laughs> um uh selling items to shops, you know, and they'll just say it as if it's gonna be a thing, and it's like right here it says tentative. It's like it might come in that patch, or it might get pushed off. Oh, <laughs> you know, it, what we covered today is this. Yeah, you got a lot to edit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this whole uh, thing, this debacle is a non debacle. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. I mean, the it's community just, is it's just a few people getting cranky because, as I said, TIG basically said, don't make us pull over. <laughs> yeah, it's. So that's, uh, that's what it is. Everyone's gotten scolded and they're complaining and they're cranky. You know, CIG's not perfect, etc. But you know what? I think it's going to be fine. It's going to blow over. It's like you're going to have a few people that are cr that are complaining. But honestly, most people just don't give a flip. <laughs> yes. You know? It's like it's like it's like okay, big hubba boo, hubba boo, but. Um, in the end, you'll get it when you get it. You'll either take it or you won't. It won't. It's like it's gonna come when it. It's gonna come when it comes. It's gonna get there when it gets there. It seems like they're trying to get Pyro out this year. That's something to cheer on. Yes. I'd like to think my 
thinking might be they might be trying to get, you know, a Squadron for the two out next year, maybe, or at least get it where they can start talking about it. But then people make that guess for a long time and nobody knows. So yeah. who knows? That's something they do need to get out the door they is Squadron 42. Need to get that out the door. To show that they can actually build a game. This, this is why Pyro and Squadron 42 are most are so important. Yeah. Because right now, right now we don't even know if CIG as a game company can make games. Yeah. They can't sit down and conclusively point to what have you made this year? Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, we've made all this stuff on this thing that we're working on, but what have you actually put out the door? They don't have it. They just yeah. don't. There's nothing for them to point to and says we made this. Yeah. And a game like Squadron 42, which is, which, you know, we don't know what all the details are going to be about it and how it's going to be, but. You know, a game like that can take time, especially with all the detail they're putting into it. So that could take, you know, 10 years. And it's yeah. been about that long. It really ought to be at a point where they should be able to start. They should have something to show for at this point. Yes. And I um, think that's what got everyone a little kind of cranky, is they should have more to show for it than what we've seen. We're they're thinking we might get another vertical slice of gameplay at the next citizen con they need to show something yeah they need they need they i will agree with what people say when they when it comes to squadron 42 the pu will never stop developing yeah but the squadron 42 is a completable game it is something that can be completed and be considered finished yes it's not like it's not like the pu where it's an ever evolving thing Garden you'll, 42, it, it, it's, it's like got a Eve. You'll end never to finish it. Eve. You will always be doing something. Same thing. The PU in uh, Star Citizen is the same way. You will always be doing something. It's like there's no, there's no win state. There's no even if they get state. every single feature done, mm -hmm. and they get every single star system they ever wanted done, there's still more they can do. It's not yeah. the end of the road. They can still add more. Mm -hmm. So. But when it comes to start Squadron 42, no, there is a defined ending. There is a end of the road. This project is complete. It's it's finalized. It's out the door. We're not going to make. We might do bug fixes in case you know we skip missed a bug or two here or there during development. That's it. Yes. It shouldn't be getting new features. It can get DLCs. It can get you know there's going to be um, more story to come. But that doesn't affect Squadron 42 properly. No. And this is and That's this what people be are just... getting kind of kind of cranky about. This is just part one of Squadron 42. Yeah. It's supposed to be multiple chapters of this. Yeah, this is supposed to be, you know, part one. It's going to be a multi-part story, but it should be a complete... It should be a complete story, though. It should have a definitive middle, end, beginning, etc. It should Tell be... Tell one thing, they need to get it done... Be to be continued. Tell you one thing, they need to get it done before Mark Hamill quicks the bucket. Oh, I know. They got to <laughs> get it done before he goes. If they want to continue to use them. I mean, they. Re I mean, I hope they have all his audio dialogue recorded. I know. I know. But um, they. You know, he's getting up there. They better yeah. hurry. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be pulling a Disney on this stuff. I mean, he sounded surprisingly good when he voiced his role in the in the, um the Book of Boba Fett and the uh, Mandalorian. I have heard that that was not computer him? generated. Oh, computer generated. Yep, I've heard that was seed uh, computer generated. Hmm. That wasn't I, actually him. Because I know it in the Mandalorian, voice, but it wasn't him. I know in the Mandalorian, it was actually him, and they just see they use CG to put a young face on him. No, no, no. They have a different actor. In fact, remember when the two pilots were were flanking Din Djarin? Yeah. And he would in in the racer that he had built, and he sped off away from him. Mm-hmm. Not the um, not 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 I I don't, I don't know the, the Asian guy. I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about on I'm talking about Gideon's dude. cruiser. When the, they were the, on... the, thin, the thin guy. I, I'm trying not to have to have any other real serious characteristics, but I need to describe him. The young oh. guy. There we go. Yeah. The young guy. That was the actor they used to do Luke uh, Skywalker. Okay. They actually brought in an actor to um they actually brought in an actor to do that. Mark Hamill. I think voiced him on that, I think, okay. on that one, but he didn't voice him on this current one. All right. At least that's what I've heard. I don't know if that's accurate, but the same guy did the, um, that same actor did the, uh, mo the, the, the actual physical work 
And then they CG'd uh, Mark Hamill on top of him. Okay. And then the, the team, this is not meant to really have to edit all this out. <laughs> she don't. Um, but the team that did the um, redo of it, yeah. they got hired because they did a, they did their own project of doing deep fake. And they did it so good. The deep fake of him. Whereas, the deep fake that they, they did so good, they hired him. Yeah, whereas um, Star Citizen, they're using him as his older self, Mark Hamill as his older yeah, self. Yeah, they use him as his, his as his as his gruffy self. And they've got his scruffy, his they, scruffy nerf herder look. <laughs> they've got quite a few big name people. I mean, they got um, Henry Cavill, John Reese Davies. Uh, who else? They just need to get finished before all these people die. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian Anderson from the from the X Files. I think they even have what's his name? Um, I I had seen him recently in something. He was in that movie Dracula once, and he was in another film. Dang it! What's his name? I can't remember. I'm having a brain fart. Um, it, yeah, but anyway. they need they. They need to get it done before these people croak. And we've we've gone way off tar we've gone way off target. Um we've gone you need way to edit off some of that topic. out too. <laughs> anyway, uh the TLDR is this was you not a boo about as nothing. big a deal. Yeah. Not as big as the content other people creators making it are out to be. What part of what they were talking about, and they needed to do a little self analysis, and I don't think they did. Yeah. Not as much as they probably should have had. Yep. And that uh, you just need to know they're working on it. It's still coming. This still. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just stop panicking. Just let us work. Yeah. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Don't make us pull over. <laughs> I think this was getting rid of this release view part was more like, get ready! Oh, well, Tigra, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. You're most welcome. And uh, I'll have you on future future episodes where we discuss other stuff. I'll be back to the virtual world. We'll have to get you in here at some point into the virtual world. Where I usually world. hang out. Um, VR chat. Uh, where I usually hang out. We'll have to get you in there at some point. But uh, right now, Discord worked. So. If they can get a Tigra character as far as the way my character looks in game, do they have any Mikote models? Uh, getting models into VR chat can be a little there's a process to it there are websites where you can build avatars and uh, and then they will upload them into vr chat and then there's another way where you have to have unity a specific version of unity and you use unity to upload it upload a uh, avatar but uh that's for that's for later yeah Okay. Yeah, so if you like this video, uh, please please consider subscribing to the channel and remember to click the bell icon so you get notifications of uh, future videos. I have been the professor with a uh, special guest, Tigra, and uh, we'll be seeing uh, more episodes of the professor coming into the future. I have some topics that I really want to discuss and talk about. Uh, there was one that I was wanting to cover, but that's already become really old news so far about the um, incompetence of the AAA industry. I think everybody pretty much acknowledges that's, that's basically true. <laughs> That they are say, pretty incompetent. I, because what are they I, not incompetent? I was going to talk about, you know, EA dropping dropping a project to do a Harry Potter MMO because they didn't think it was going to be popular. That was that was almost that a idea of that is almost guaranteed to just print money. Harry and Potter they, MMO? Yeah, a Harry Potter MMO. 
and they dropped it. It was originally what it was going to be about, but I think it's time to move on because I think a lot more interesting stuff has happened since then <laughs> in the gaming industry. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching and I'll be back in 3D space in the next episode. And we'll have a very interesting topic for then. So I have been the professor. Thanks for watching. And you have any uh, last minute things, Tiger? No, that's good. I'm good here. All right. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>